In order to counter the Alliance's vast military, Zav began work on a humanoid fighting mecha that was based on the humble power loader worker suit. This would eventually result in the now famous Jin. The first known prototype for the Jin was the YMF 01B, completed in Cosmic Era 67, and is therefore sometimes considered as the first prototype mobile suit ever. However, even though it was the first one to see combat, the first prototype to be completed was an unknown unit in Cosmic Era 65. Due to time and possibly secrecy, almost all data on it has been lost and we currently only know that it existed. Still, it is possible that since the 67 prototype was a YMF 01B, that the 65 prototype was the earlier YMF 01A. Upon completion then, the YMF 01B was deemed as a success and would enter mass production, while at the same time being further developed into what would eventually become the ZGMF 1017 Jin. It was also at this time that the name of the YMF 01B was changed from Jin to Proto Jin in order to avoid confusion. But even with the introduction of the new Jin, the role of the Proto Jin was far from over. Some units were redesigned as the ZGMT 01 Jin Trainer and would serve as training units for ZAF pilots for many years to come, even after the introduction of newer machines. A less glamorous role that they were also often seen in was as manual labor on board of ships or at many ZAF bases. Some of these worker units also seem to have had their backpacks replaced with that of a Jin Ochre, a modification that makes a lot of sense considering that this backpack increased the Jin's operating time by adding extra batteries and gas turbine generators. Due to their high production numbers, they were also sold to private entities. A more honorable distinction then that I also previously mentioned is that the Proto Jin was the first mobile suit to ever be used in battle. In Cosmic Era 69, Plant Supreme Council Chairman Siegel Klein announced that Junius 7 through Junius 10 would be converted into agricultural colonies in order to increase plant autonomy. In response, several of the plant sponsor nations decided to use their military might as a threat. For them, it was vital that the plants remained reliant on them so that they could keep control over them. Unfortunately for them, this plan completely backfired when the fleet they sent was annihilated by a much smaller force of Zaft mobile suits. It was in the wake of this incident that Alliance Admiral Dwayne Halberton proposed the G-Project. Even though it was rejected, he still managed to get it started in secret. It is also possible that this battle is where the estimate of one Jin equals three Mobius mobile armors originated. It would also explain why this estimate proved so wrong during the Bloody Valentine War. Not only had the Jin pilots not experienced real combat yet, but the standard Jin was also significantly more powerful than the proto Jin that was used during this battle. Other than some slight redesigns to the armor, the biggest changes were an added sensor array on its head and a much higher performance backpack. Its standard weaponry consisted of a 76mm heavy assault machine gun and a heavy blade. Oftentimes they would also be seen with the Pardus triple barreled short range guided missile launchers and the Katus 500mm recoilless rifle. And for taking on heavily fortified targets, they could also be outfitted with the so-called D-Equipment. This consisted of either two Kanus short-range guided missile launchers or a Baruskai heavy ion cannon. This last one was also the only beam weapon in the Jin's arsenal because it had its own reactor rather than having to rely on the Jin's reactor. This D-Equipment could then also be paired with the Pardus missile launchers for even more firepower. And finally, some Jins have also been spotted with a sniper rifle that was typically associated with the Jin long range reconnaissance type. This large variety of weapons combined with a very solid base model made the Jin a very versatile unit that was quickly produced en masse by Zaft. And as a result, many personalized custom units exist. The most well known unit was probably Miguel Iman's Bright Orange Jin and the color wasn't just for show. It had enhanced thrusters that gave it a 20% performance boost over the regular Jin, and it also had a customized shield for defensive purposes. Together with this machine, Miguel earned himself the nickname the Magic Bullet of Dusk. Unfortunately, this machine was undergoing repairs during the attack on Heliopolis, 
and Miguel was forced to temporarily switch to a standard gin instead. Another gin with upgraded thrusters was the red custom gin used by ace pilot Good Ver, who later became known as the hero of Zaft. This was after a miraculous battle where he single-handedly managed to take out an entire Federation fleet after all of his allies had been defeated. Other than increased performance, it also had customized shoulders, and despite being known as the hero of Zaft, he would later desert the army. Other custom colored gins were the white machines used by Jean Carey and Raoul Le Creuset, although other than the color scheme, these were just standard gins. And given their widespread usage, it also shouldn't come as a surprise that many units fell into private hands and were customized as their owners saw fit. One such unit belonged to collector and professional mobile suit pilot Kate Madigan, who adorned his standard gin with his trademark white and orange cross. Another standard gin with some slight visual alterations was Unno's gin, although other than the color scheme, they weren't exactly customizations as much as they were repairs. While protecting his colony from pirates, his gin got damaged, and everyone's favorite jungle tech Lo Gyul did his best to patch up the gin. As a thank you then, the old swordsman gave Lo the katana of his mobile suit, the Garbera Strait, and also trained Lo how to use it. This then left to repair Jin with only the Tiger Pierce Wakizashi, but who needs ranged weapons when you have style? Two of the most notorious Jins then were no doubt the two custom ones used by mercenary group Serpent Tail. One was used by Elijah Keel and had the so-called Buster Sword mounted on its head that could be used as a last resort. The other one then was used by their main pilot, Guy Murakumo. This machine was significantly more customized and therefore also had a much higher performance than the standard Jin. For greater speed and agility, its armor was made thinner, and additional thrusters were mounted on its body and on the legs. And to fuel all of these extra thrusters, it had two large fuel tanks mounted on the back that gave it more operating time than the standard Jin. Despite all of this though, Guy's Jin wasn't made for combat per se. It was designed with a specific mission in mind, destroying a Zaft supply base and then getting the hell out of there. The increased operating time was so that it could operate more independently away from their mothership, and its weapons also reflect this attitude. It was armed with flashbangs to make a quick getaway, and rather than the Jin's standard heavy sword, it was armed with two last-ditch Armor Schneider combat knives, which have seemingly nothing to do with the Strike's Armor Schneider combat knives as far as we know. It could be that maybe they were made by the same company and that they're differentiated by a model number, which we don't know about, but regardless. Other than those unique weapons, Guy's Jin could of course also use the standard Jin weaponry, and the M68 Katu's recoilless rifle works wonders against bases. One more interesting modification was that instead of the normal sensor mohawk, it had a second mono eye to better survey its surroundings. Moving on to the Second Bloody Valentine War then, another infamous Jin appeared and would become even more notorious. This unit, typically called the Insurgent type, was mostly brown and also had floodlights installed on it. On the normal Jin, these would have been pointless since it came equipped with a low light level television system for use in low light situations. The reason for the floodlights then was that the group that used this Jin simply could not figure out this system and therefore had to improvise. It also prominently featured a red K on its chest, and although it's not confirmed what it stands for, given that its actions involved indiscriminately killing civilians, I would say that simply kill is not a far-fetched explanation. The saddest part then is that this terrorist djinn was piloted by three children. Of course, many pirates would also manage to get their hands on some djinns, with Anstan, or Hinson, depending on how you want to pronounce it, turning his djinn into a very metal machine. Other than screaming it's not a phase mom, it also came with a nice array of weapons, turning this into quite a deadly machine. 
Next up then are two extremely customized pirate gins that were designed to work in tandem with each other. The Gin Tempester was designed as a high mobility unit with larger thrusters than the normal Gin, but this also meant that its operational time suffered. The Gin Fuego, on the other hand, was the long range support unit of the duo. That being said, it was less of a mobile suit and more of a missile truck with the Gin's head on it. And while they were probably fine customs in their own right, their big mistake was taking on Jung Gil's number one ace pilot. Low Gule. And talking about the Jung Guild, they of course also made their own custom gin, the Works Gin. Essentially, this was any gin that they could get their hands on and then modified to be more geared towards industrial uses. Due to the nature of this machine, many different variants exist, but the most common modifications were a new backpack, different shoulders, and a winch on the crotch. For combat then, these units have been seen with a Mobius's linear gun jerry-rigged into their hands, but presumably they could also still use standard gin weaponry, assuming that they were available and that their works gin still had normal manipulator hands. But now back to Zaft. Seeing as how many gins were created, they also came up with a system to easily increase the performance of existing gins. Rather than painstakingly customizing them, they designed the Assault Shroud. The idea was simple, literally increase everything. It had more armor, more thrusters, more batteries, and more built-in weapons. There was only one problem. The Saigu finished its development shortly after the Assault Shroud was introduced, and it was simply more cost-effective to start producing the new and superior unit, and because of this, only a handful of these so-called Gen Assault types exist. Despite this, the armor did have a lasting legacy. The Saigu would also get its own Assault Shroud, albeit slightly differently, and later the captured Dual Gundam would also get an Assault Shroud inspired by that of the Jin. The final unit we'll be covering in today's video then is the Jin Ceremonial Decoration Type. And as the name indicates, this machine was mainly meant as a showpiece during important events, ceremonies, parades, etc. As a result, it had very ornate golden markings inspired by dress uniforms of the past, and this included a mobile suit sized aiguillette, a ceremonial saber for the officers, and a ceremonial 76mm rifle for the normal soldiers. There is definitely something quaint about seeing a super modern mech with a single shot bolt action rifle made out of real oak. Normally this rifle was loaded with blanks, but should the need arise, it could also be loaded with real ammo. The saber on the other hand was made from foam metal and was purely cosmetic. So that is all for part 1 of the Jin's development history. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like and stay tuned for part 2 where we'll be covering the more specialized gins. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters, I hope all of you watching have a great day and I'll see you all next time.